If you remember my generic overview slide, one of the things that needs to be defined before you are able to spin off an instance is the definition of the network. So we are going to configure some networking here. A good starting point is the network topology link, which is showing current topology. As you can see, it's empty. From this interface, I can create, uh, click create network. I'm not doing it here. I'm doing it from the networks interface. So let's click create network. Now this network uh, needs a name. So let's call it int-net, an internal network. I'm using one internal network only. Uh, it is possible to create several internal networks if you want to do complicated cloud configurations. I don't want to be using complicated cloud configurations. I want to keep it simple. So int-net is what I need. Next, I click next. Uh, and we need a subnet as well. The network is just the basic entity. The subnet is the part that is containing the actual network configuration. Let's call it int sub. And the subnet needs a network address. So you can see here it uh, explains the address in CIDR format. Now the interesting thing about this internal subnet address is that it doesn't need to match anything that is uh, used on the physical network adapters. So my ETH0 adapter is using a 192.168.4.0 IP address and my ETH1 adapter is in 172.16 somewhere. Uh, this IP address doesn't have to match either of them because this is software defined networking. This is networking that is going to be managed by the cloud and that is going to be living in the cloud and that is strictly separated from the physical networking that we are already using. Now these are the IP addresses that are going to be used internally. Now these internal machines need to be able to get out, so we want to be, uh, we want to specify an IP address. Now the default, if we hover over, is that the first IP address is being used. Uh, you can type anything if you don't like the first IP address being used. If, for example, you want it to be the last IP address, just make sure that you include an IP address in the configuration. Oh, and by the way, I have seen issues with leaving this option blank, so I would recommend even if you want it to be 10.0.0.1, uh, just type it in, just to be sure. It doesn't hurt anyway, so why shouldn't you do it? After specifying the properties of this network, I'm clicking next for some of the subnet details. So on the internal network, it's a good idea to use DHCP. So we are using the, the enable DHCP option here. Uh, and for DHCP, you need an allocation pool. Again, it's a good idea to hover over so that you can see the example. So what you can see here is that it's a comma separated list. So if I wanted to be able to assign IP addresses starting from 10.0.0.100 up to 10.0.0.150, for example, this is where I'm doing it. In case you want to use DNS name servers, which is always a smart idea, uh, enter them here. And you can enter specific host routes as well. This is not something that typically you need to be doing. So after entering all this, you can click Create which will create the configuration for you. And we can see success. We've been successful in creating this network, which is cool. Next, we are going to create another network because we don't just need an internal network, we also need an external network. Now, the external network is something different. Uh, let's call it XNet to start with. And the procedure is pretty similar. So the subnet name that we are going to use is ext uh, sub. And the network address, well, that is something that does need to match external network configuration. Because this is what is going to be used by the machines uh, to get externally. So I am going to use 196.168.4.0 uh, here with slash 24. So why am I using the public IP address range? Well, I might want to have my virtual machines reachable from the uh, external network. 
from the public network, from the internet. So we need an external network. And this is like NAT in your home network. So make sure it matches uh, something that is used physically in your environment. On the external network, of course, we are going to need an IP address for the default gateway, which is set to 4.2 in this configuration. Something that we don't want to use typically on the external network is a DHCP server. So I'm taking away enable DHCP, but I'm going to create an allocation pool anyway. This is the allocation pool for the floating IP addresses. The floating IP addresses are individual public IP addresses I'm going to define here and that we can assign to the nodes later on. So that is going to be 192.168.4.1.1 100 up to 192.168.4.110. We do want some DNS to be happening here. And once we've done that, we can click Create. Back to the network topology, we can see that the networks currently are existing, but they are not connected. Oh, by the way, if you're using a previous version of OpenStack, you will see that the topology is looking a little bit different, but hey, that doesn't really matter what it looks like. These are some of those tiny little differences that you, you will see in between versions. Uh, in order to connect these networks, I'm going to need a router. But before doing the router, I'm going to finish my external network configuration. What I have just done, I have created an external network, and this external network uh, refers to addresses that are actually physically being used. Do you really think that a member user of a tenant can do that? Well, no. And that is why I need to get out of here, and I need to become cloud administrator. Well, I don't have to be cloud administrator. Tenant administrator is good enough. But the tenant administrator needs to set the properties uh, of the network. So there we go. We have the networks. And we can see the EXT net network. I'm clicking the link. And this is giving access to some configuration. Oops. I need to go back here because this was the wrong link. We can see the EXT net network, and I'm clicking Edit Network. Uh, notice that there are differences. There is uh, an option to click the link, which is giving you a completely different interface. Uh, you don't need to do this interface. You need Edit Network, because what you need to do, and you need to be cloud administrator in order to do it, you need to set it as the external network. Ordinary users cannot just mess up your external network. You need admin privileges to do that. Makes sense, doesn't it? So now the external network has successfully been uh, updated, and that's all I needed to do as a cloud administrator. So right now I can sign out again, and the rest of the procedure I can do it as user Linda. So I'm back in as user Linda this time. And I can continue creating the network configuration that I need. So I'm clicking Routers this time. And I'm going to add a router, a software-defined router. So a router name, let's call it Router1. Admin state up external network, that is going to be the EXT net. And this is only going to work because as a cloud administrator, I have set the external network as an external network. So right now we can see the router being connected to the external network. And from here we can uh, set some properties. There's a drop-down list in which we can edit the router. You can see this is also giving access to different properties as compared to when you're clicking the link. Uh, we can see the external gateway with source net being uh, enabled. If you're familiar with the technology, you know what this is about. You can see that even we've got an external IP address on the router, which is good, uh, and which is going to be needed for routing. 
and we can specify interfaces as well. So what are we doing here? Well, we can add interfaces. And these interfaces, this is where you are going to assign the subnet. So I'm selecting the subnet. And do I need an IP address? I don't know. Uh, possibly specify an IP address for the interface that is created. Now, if you are specifying an IP address here, that needs to be the IP address that you are going to use for uh, routing purposes. Because this is the IP address that the nodes on the internal network are going to address to, uh, to get outside. Make sure this matches. And this might also be a reason why you want to be using the default assigned IP address. If you don't have this IP address, you risk that you're never going to get out from the virtual machines uh, to the external network. Once you've done this, you can click Add Interface. And now it's a good moment to look at the network topology again. What we can see here, we can see the internal network with this nice internal network icon. We can see the router. We can see the external network also. So this is looking good. Nothing else that needs to be done here. And this concludes our sub-lesson about network management.